Something you said, and I'd love to ask you about this, if we can't really reopen the country without testing, shouldn't testing be free? And who pays for the president's daily tests? Well, the taxpayers pay for the president's daily test, and I do think that testing should be free and widespread, um, mainly because the people that uh, desperately need it the most are minority populations and especially lower income workers who can't afford the test. Uh, you know, in Illinois, for example, African Americans are 15 percent of our population, yet they're over 35 percent of the COVID positive cases. Um, and if you are a cafeteria worker, if you are a janitor, if you are someone who's working at McDonald's supplying my family with the chicken McNuggets that keeps my daughters from melting down, um, and, and a test, and a test uh, kit take costs 60 bucks, you're not going to get tested. You're going to show up for work, even though you think you may be sick, because there's no other options. We have backed you into a corner. And so if we really, truly want to stop the spread of this virus, we need to make sure there is widespread and free testing, and there should be widespread personal protective equipment available for everyone who has to work in these jobs that are in, that involve contact with other people. Hmm. Senator, the White House is bracing us uh, for an unemployment rate that could pass 20 percent. That would be higher than one seen during the Great Depression. With a true $2 trillion stimulus bill passed and Congress looking at even more aid, you are calling on changes. What exactly is it that you're looking for? Well, there are several things that I'm pushing for the next stimulus package. Uh, the next thing that I'm working on right now is um, allowing newborn babies who were born in 2020 for their parents to claim the $500 dependence uh, stimulus uh, money for them. Uh, the, the bill that we passed the last time, um, it's all based on when you can uh, turn in your IRS, uh, your tax returns, and babies who were born this year don't technically count for the IRS until you claim them next year in your 2020 uh, tax returns. So um, one of the newborns uh, act of, um, that I have introduced will allow for families to claim that $500 uh, for their dependents uh, who were born this year right away, because parents can't wait until next year for money to buy diapers and formula and car seats and all of that. Um, I'm also working on a bill to provide more funding for small businesses uh, programs, especially Title VII programs that allow businesses to access funds to help them with their payroll and their uh, overhead and all of those things that you need in order to stay um, open. You know, in Illinois, small businesses are 95% of our employers. So we need to make sure we help small businesses if we want people to get back to work. Okay, uh, let's talk about something that makes me feel somewhat optimistic. The fact that November will come and there will be an election and maybe we can get him out of the White House. So uh, there are rumors swirling around that Joe Biden is seriously looking at you as his vice presidential candidate. So I have two questions. Are you interested in being the vice president? And in fact, have they been vetting you at all so that we can even get more excited? <laughs> well, Joy, let me, let me just start off by saying that my focus is on getting Joe Biden elected. Um, as you, I am frustrated with Donald Trump and this failure of a regime, of, a, of, of an administration in the White House. So I would do whatever I need to do to help Joe Biden get elected so that we can finally turn the corner in this country and, and get back on a path uh, where we need to be. Um, uh, I'm sure that they have their own process as to how they're going to select the vice president, and I will leave them to it. I'm just having my name mentioned in the same breath as, as you know, uh, the, the chairwoman of the Tammy caucus in the Senate, uh, Tammy Baldwin, and, and the likes of Amy Klobuchar is um, really um, breathtaking for me. So, um, you know, I, I'll, leave, I'll leave the Biden camp to their process. Uh, and in the meantime, I'm going to work as hard as I can to get Joe Biden elected. Senator, there, there's been a, a call for a vice president of, uh, of color um, to be considered by the Biden campaign. What are your thoughts about that? I think it's long overdue. I think that uh, it's long overdue to have women and people of color to have equal representation in our nation's government. Uh, um, you know, uh, if you look at the Senate, there are more white men named John than there are senators of color. Um, uh, in the United States Senate, there, you know, we, while we have a large number of women senators, um, we're nowhere near 51% of the United States Senate. Um, we need more diversity and representation, not just in the Senate, not just in the White House, not just, uh, but also in, 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 in the C-suites of our corporate headquarters, in the Pentagon at the very top um, levels, because only when we have true diversity in our government will America be as strong as she can possibly be, because then she will truly reflect 
um, the people who live here and, and, and the, all the strength that all of us bring to the table. Let me also ask you this, Senator. Last week, Tara Reid, who has accused uh, Joe Biden of sexual assault in 1993, spoke for the first time publicly about the allegations, saying he should not be running on character and he should withdraw from the race. Uh, Vice President Biden has said the incident never happened. You said all women should be heard. And now that you have heard what she said, should do you think uh, Biden should withdraw from the race? Well, I've consistently said that all victims should be heard. Um, I've also said that these allegations should be investigated, and that is what's ongoing now. Um, and I do think that, uh, you know, President, Vice President Biden has addressed these allegations, and he has called for the um, the archives to release his Senate personnel records, which I think would be an important next step. So I do think we should continue with the investigation, but I think he has addressed these allegations um, directly, and I'm glad that he's done that. Um, but I do think that uh, as we move forward, we need to be sure to um, make sure that all women know that they, they have a right to be heard and that these, these allegations should always be investigated.